we'll, uh, I'm going to try to fill the number here, and, and he'll show you just exactly what it is that he does when, uh, when he backs up a, a fiddle tune, uh, and you'll see just how unique it is. And, and a lot of times in the bands he plays, a lot of times they may not have a bass player. I think now y'all have a pretty regular bass yeah. with you, but uh, I know a lot of times you went without a bass player. And with Chester style, you don't need a bass, really. It's just added, you know, what he does really covers, you know, the full rhythm side of things with the old time string band. Play a little leather bridges. Leather bridges? Yeah. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> Circle Be Unbroken album back in the 70s and got uh, familiar with Doc Watson and Norman Blake and some of the ones on there and listened more to their music and got more attracted to it and listened to them talk about theirs. They referred back to people like the Dillmore brothers and the Carter family. So I kind of wanted to hear what that was and heard it and began to like the fact that it was sort of rooted in this area. As I was getting into singing with my then girlfriend, but future wife Jenny, we thought we'd like to have a, something that would be more authentic to the sound that, say, the Carter family had, and, and they used a big old arch top in a lot of their sound. But we weren't trying to really copy them, but we just kind of thought that was a cool alternate to the flat top world. But we kind of mixed the sound of a flat top capoed up, I mean, a arch top capoed up and a flat top lower came uh, where we had a dual sound with one guitar favoring the bass and the other one favoring some high P 
pitch lead that was up on the neck with the capo. But today I brought this thing by myself and I thought I'd play you something. Shows how the arch top's kind of good for bass also. So at some point we got this uh, Gibson to put in our sound and then we found another one similar to it and so well, it'd be cool to have two arch tops in this mm -hmm. So uh, this is the one I keep for my <laughs> She's got one that's got a lot more wear on it. It sounds as good or better. But I, you know, the style, like Chester, I think about playing bass and rhythm to back up a song and doing what bass players in bluegrass bands might do with their runs. And sometimes guitar players and bass players both do runs in bluegrass music. And in some as old style like we would do, we try to take care of the bass while we're playing and uh, keep rhythm. So I'd use a flat pick instead of finger picks like Chester did. Mother Maybell Carter did with her first finger and thumb pick. Something like that. Of course, a tune every country guitar player has to know is Wildwood Flower. So I'll play it just a touch of that. And then I'll... My dad played the old time harmonica in a tongue blocking style. He didn't play guitar, but when I got familiar with Doc Watson and how he would use a frame and, and play songs, also I'd seen Bob Dylan and John Lennon of the Beatles even used one. And, and it goes on back to even this area where Ernest Stoneman was and uh, Henry Witter, they played songs and backed themselves playing a harmonica part. But I like to just play a little short bit of a tune my dad played, which was Wreck of 97, which was recorded by some of the people from this area. So what I'm trying to do is just back myself up playing the melody on the harmonica and playing some backup runs just to keep the song flowing. Wrong tune. <laughs> Nice. 